6 o'clock right here on Big Breakfast. Today FM today is hit music. Hey, I'm Pauline. And I'm Ellen. Tune in to the Breakfast Show on Today FM with Pauline and I every weekday morning. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Right here on, on Today FM. Today's hit music. Today FM. Today's hit music. In this bulletin, European Union identifies sugar industry weaknesses. FPSA challenges legality of FTUC elections. And Ministry of Health reviews nursing structure to retain skilled workers. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The European Union has allocated up to $46 million towards the agriculture and sugar industries. The EU has met with the Ministry of Sugar to identify areas it can help fund from the new bilateral aid now available following the country's return to parliamentary democracy. Christopher Chand reports. The EU has spent over $150 million through various non-government organizations and international organizations to assist sugarcane farmers. And while these projects are continuing, there is more opportunity for assistance. We have 28 million euros available for our new bilateral cooperation program with Fiji and uh, up to 20 million euros of that will be used to focus on agriculture and uh, and on on sugar. So we we have a reasonable sum of money and uh, now we're, we're, we're working on how best to spend that money in order particularly to to increase competitiveness. The sugar industry's biggest challenge will come in 2017 when our sugar exports will no longer get EU preferential market access. It's going to be a challenge and uh, I'm very aware that uh, all involved know that uh, 2017 is not going to be easy but I think uh, we will do all that we can in order to support initiatives which uh, boost competitiveness. The EU Ambassador Andrew Jacobs was accompanied by the British High Commissioner Roderick Drummond and the French Ambassador Michel Djokovic on their visit to EU-funded projects in Lotoka today. Part of their visit was to the Sugar Research Institute of Fiji, where the EU has funded close to 11 million Fijian dollars. So we have, we uh, and the Fijian government are all looking at this as a whole to see how we can help make the industry as a whole Uh, more competitive and stand on its own feet uh, after uh, 2017. The emphasis by the EU is to help the sugar industry remain competitive in the world market when the EU quota will come to an end in two years' time. Christopher Chand, FBC News. A 71-year-old grandfather of two has been sentenced to 10 years, 8 months imprisonment for five counts of rape and two counts of sexual assault. Between January and October 2013, the perpetrator raped and assaulted his two grandchildren on numerous occasions. The victims were aged 6 and 7 at the time. The court in passing sentence stated that rape of children has become more common and frequent in Fiji, and more so the rape of juvenile girls by elderly family members who are in a position of trust. A domestic violence restraining order has also been issued against the perpetrator, ordering him not to have any contact with the two victims. He must serve a minimum of eight years before parole. Police have interviewed two suspects in relation to the discovery of three cartons of testosterone and sorry, ananthid, which is an anabolic androgenic steroid. Three cartons weighing 44 kilograms arrived at Nandi Airport last Thursday on a flight from Hong Kong. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority confiscated the cartons listed as containing colored pencils. The importer is a local woman who allegedly had the steroids sent via air freight. Testosterone ananthate is a prohibited import under the Illicit Drugs Control Act of 2004. It is used for medical treatment such as for cancer and is often illegally abused for bodybuilding. Nurses are in for a pay rise in the Ministry of Health if the Ministry of Health is able to complete its review of the nursing structure. Director Nursing Selina Wanga says they're leading the charge to retain skilled workers and maintain services to Fijians. Savara Tambua has more. 
Better management and overseas training will be in the new nursing structure to make greener pastures seem not so lucrative. So what we want to do is a three-tier structure, and we are considering that seriously, uh, to have a structure towards a career pathway for specialised nurses, for public health and for nursing management. However, our 2,000 plus nurses are more interested in take-home pay, and that's what they'll be getting. Director Nursing Selina Wanga says in the future, salaries will also reflect the training and experience of nurses. The current nursing structure was established in 1943 and needs to better reflect the workplace. I'm really hoping that, you know, the best way to go is looking at it um, and doing it through phases, in phases. If we can get the first phase going, you know, not just bulk, you know, it might incur a lot of money. So we are trying to be sensitive and wise in doing it in phases if we can do a division or we can do a speciality. The existing nursing structure was established in 1943 and has changed very little in the last 70 years. The only improvement there has been has come through public service reform and no specific scrutiny of the nursing profession. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. The Fiji Public Service Association has taken the Fiji Trades Union Congress to court seeking the nullification of the recent election of executives. The matter was heard in the Employment Court today. The FPSA is seeking to have the election of Felix Anthony and Daniel Urai declared null and void, claiming they have political affiliations and are not eligible to be union executives. The FPSA claims the elections were in contravention of Section 57, Subsection 1 of the 2013 Constitution Constitution, as well as in breach of the electoral decree. FTUC lawyer Aman Ravindra Singh asked for the matter to be struck out today. However, the court has given the FPSA seven days to amend its documents. FPSA General Secretary Rajeshwar Singh contested and lost the election for the National Secretary of the FTUC. Still to come on FBC News, individual members of landowning units get registered to get equal share of lease money. बॉलीवुड हीरो पंती रे गेट दिस हीरो 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 सपना दिखेला बंद करो क्या करो यार सबको आती नहीं मेरी जाती नहीं मिर्ची मस्त मॉर्निंग मैं हूँ अश्विन सिंह हाय मैं हूँ काजल शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे सिक्स ए एम टू नाइन ए एम मिर्ची एफ एम एट्स हार्ट Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Ito K Land Trust Board is now registering individual members of all landowning units. This is a prerequisite for members of a Toka Toka, Matangali or Yamvusa to receive equal share of lease monies that they're entitled to. Ritika Pratap reports. The only provinces to have electronic copies of the Volanika Wambula or the Register of Ito K Landowners, Amba, Bua, Dakandrove and Kandavu. Um, registration for individual members is uh, very important. It, in fact, it's uh, very critical to the um, full implementation of the equal distribution policy, which was uh, initiated uh, way back in uh, 2011. Eh? So it's very important that um, we carry out this exercise um, as part of the last phase for full implementation. The other 10 provinces are still in the process of electronic registration, which the TLTB needs to administer lease monies. While it waits for the full electronic records of the VKB, the TLTB is registering individual landowners. Uh, for all landowners, including um, minor, minors who have been registered in the Volanik Kambula, so uh, I guess the the minimum age would be the the dependent on the registration made by parents uh, in the Register of Landowners or the VKBA. 
The payouts will depend on the lease monies received for each land-owning unit. General Manager Ali Patingataki says it's going to be a long process. They aim to finish by November, once the electronic copies of the VKB are ready. We intend to start at head office in Suba, and then we'll move on to uh, other uh, townships and uh, centres. We'll move to villages and tikinas. Uh, we'll also move to schools and uh, higher education institutions. And we'll also move to the outer islands. Members are required to bring a copy of birth certificate, copy of tin letter of Firka FNPF joint card, valid EVR card, driver's license or passport, bank accounts confirmation or bank support letter. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. All Itao-K landowners and landowning units can now apply for funds from the $10 million set aside in the 2015 budget to meet development costs. The grant is specifically for connecting and constructing utilities such as water, electricity and roads for a proposed development area. Itao-K Lands Trust Board General Manager Ali Patingetaki says a lot of landowners are keen to apply. Up to last week uh, our information was that all funds are still with the Ministry of Finance. We are happy that uh, the, um, the, um, the advertisement has come out because that has shed a lot of light uh, to what the fund is about and also particularly how to access that fund. The $10 million fund is administered by the Finance Ministry. The TLTB is helping farmers meet the criteria to access the funding. Health Minister Chone Usamate says more attention needs to be given to biomedical engineering. There are a few biomedical experts in Fiji, and that puts a strain on medical services. Akusita Tale has the details. Biomedical engineers study test results and scans to give medical opinions, something seriously lacking in Fiji. That is why it is equally important that our biomedical engineering units are given due attention by our different countries. At present, we have only one qualified biomedical engineer in Fiji and Samoa, while other countries outsource this need. We need to start investing and developing our biomedical human resource. Fiji's medical services mostly depend on machines to interpret results from MRIs and other complex scans. If these machines fail, there are no backups or technicians to fix them. There are a handful of biomedical engineers, but they are relying more on experience than qualifications. In complicated situations, test results have to be sent overseas for medical opinion. Fiji also doesn't have biomedical technicians who design and build artificial limbs and organs, new generation imaging machines and advanced prosthetics. Most people have said it'll be great to have more surgeons, anesthetists, pediatricians and so on. But Often you go to a hospital in one of the Pacific Island countries and there's really good quality equipment, biomedical equipment, which isn't being used. It hasn't been properly commissioned or it's, or it's not working at the moment and may need someone to come and check it and, and determine how to get it running again. A lack of awareness in this field is partly to blame for this acute shortage of manpower. In the last 10 or 20 years, there's been a huge growth in the use of technology, biomedical technology, um, to diagnose you know, x-rays, uh, uh, MRIs, uh, um, ultrasound equipment, all of which need biomedical technicians. There is at the moment only one qualified prosthetic technician based in Suva. Akusita Tale, FBC News. There was a 5.6% increase in visitor arrivals in January this year compared to last year. A little over 50,200 visitors arrived in the country last month. Visitors from New Zealand recorded the highest of about 6,000 visitors, an increase of about 18%. About 3,000 Pacific Islanders travelled to our shores last month. There were about 25,000 visitors from Australia for the same month. 74% of these visitors came for holiday purposes, about 6 came to visit their friends or relatives. Two and a half percent of visitors came for business purposes, while another 16 percent visited the country for other reasons. 
The Land Transport Authority admits it has not been monitoring second-hand car dealers properly. Chief Executive Naisithuina Deva told FBC News they are now improving on their policing methods so that unscrupulous dealers can be taken to task in a more effective manner. Chanel Sivan has more. The Land Transport Authority this year is getting even more strict with its policing of unscrupulous second-hand car dealers. It's how we have been facilitating, how we've been um, uh, policing uh, this matter, which has not uh, been really done to the level supposed to be doing. But now, as uh, we move on, and there are lots of uh, second-hand cars around, and it's also um, an increase in the volume of uh, vehicle coming, uh, vehicles coming into our, uh, onto our roads, uh, and uh, also with uh, some of these complaints about uh, the trading, uh, yeah, we are taking steps into combating this. The LTA is also looking at reintroducing the JEVIC system of car inspection, which will require cars to be inspected before shipment to Fiji. Nesatuna Deva says a consultation will be done before the system is used again. The um, Land Transport Authority Board has uh, approved in uh, principle on the uh, reintroduction or bringing back uh, this uh, JEVIC uh, concept. And uh, we have already discussed with FIRCA, and uh, it's also something that they've endorsed, and they are willing to work with us on this. Uh, the border security people that is um, also and, um, part of the stakeholders uh, to this, um, and they are also happy. We are all happy with this, but um, perhaps uh, it's uh, how um, we need uh, to uh, do a bit of adjustment on this uh, concept that also, you know, it's very, very uh, sensitive to some areas. So that's what we are doing now, and we're hoping in um, a few months uh, down the line today, and we hope uh, that uh, by mid this year we'll be able to reach uh, you know, uh, the decision of when we really want to make it happen again. By June? By June. The Consumer Council of Fiji and the Fiji Commerce Commission is assisting LTA in this area. All we want is to see that the customers are happy end of the day. They know that uh, you know, they're buying cars and it's a quality car. They are happy with uh, uh, that uh, money worth spend, uh, spend on this uh, item. The Land Transport Authority says last year it suspended licenses of some unscrupulous dealers and this year it will not hesitate to suspend licenses of other dishonest dealers. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. And on that note, it's not it's sports time now. So sorry, getting my words mixed up. What, yeah, no, what do you have just, for us, Jamie? I'm just excited to see you. <laughs> it's all right. Yes, I am. I'm happy you're back. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Coming up, Fiji Pearls depart for two of Australia and New Zealand and Fiji Football Tiger 2016 Olympic spot. We'll have this and more after the break. Gold FM, all of the classic hits. I hope you're having fun so far. You're listening to The Ride. And I'm Kara, taking you through your afternoon. Stay with me to listen to more awesome classics right here on The Ride. Mulubinaka, for awesome sounds in the afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful classics. Join me on The Ride every weekday right here on Gold FM, all of the classic hits from 2 to 7. Just don't ask me what it was. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side has been drawn with rival Samoa for the 40th edition of the Hong Kong 7s. The Fijians who beat Samoa 36-0 in pool play last weekend in Vegas will also take on Canada and Belgium. The tournament will also have a Tier 2 competition which will allow teams to gain promotion as core teams for next season. The Hong Kong 7s will be played from March 27th to the 29th. Former national rep Ifremi Rawanga has praised the Vodafone Fiji 7s team for their hard work and determination at the Las, we- Las Vegas 7s yesterday. Rawanga adds the side is capable of winning gold at the Olympics if they maintain their current form. The Wunder man says Fiji's performance in the final against New Zealand was impressive and made the country very proud. I think the um, well, uh, whole of Fiji will be uh, happy. Um, the boys uh, do their part and um, all of Fiji is uh, behind them so uh, we thank the boys for uh, a good win and uh, we're looking forward to the next uh, few tournaments before the Olympic The Fiji side defeated New Zealand 35-19 to win the cup final in Nevada 
The Fiji Pearls have embarked on its next phase of preparation for the upcoming World Cup in August. Josephine Navula caught up with the side before departure and filed this report. The Fiji Pearls are hoping the tour to New Zealand and Australia will help the side mature in time for the World Cup. Coach Kate Carpenter says they need tours as such to build a winning culture amongst and strong mentality for big matches. So we've got two practice matches against Kia Magic and then one against their development side. Um, so in all we'll have uh, 14 athletes in, in New Zealand, 12 here from Fiji, and then we're picking up two athletes from New Zealand. She adds the Pearls will be fielding some new talent during the tour. Because they were deserving, they had good performances in a practice match against Samoa at that time, and so hoping that this opportunity will um, extend them even further. For two of the newbies, making it into the squad for their first international outing means a whole lot for them. Being a part of the squad and just having opportunities to tour like this is, is yeah, it's a really good opportunity. So um, ambitions is basically just working towards the World Cup and hopefully go further in my netball career. I'm happy that uh, I have uh, um, this uh, first year for me to go for the tour. Uh, After playing in New Zealand, the Fiji Pearls will then depart for Australia on February 22nd to take on Melbourne Vixens. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. The International Hockey Federation has included Epeli Tukuda in its officiating panel, which means he is now eligible to be upgraded to international outdoor umpiring duties. The international body recognized Tukuda's performance at the 2014 FIH World Series in Oceania Pacific Cup held in Suva last year. The soft-spoken achiever who took up umpiring four years back says he made the choice as age had caught up on his playing days. I still am an active uh, player in hockey and um, I just couldn't uh, meet the, because of the, all these new, young players coming in. So we're getting a Falling out, there's a fallout in the national side, so I kind of ask myself, how can I contribute to hockey? What other way instead of playing? So I thought of umpire, mm. and it took me four years, but got there. Meanwhile, Joanna Underwood of Nandi has been appointed as technical official and judge for the Hawks Bay Festival of Hockey, which will be held in April. The Fiji Under-23 football side has set its sights on playing in the 2016 Brazil Olympics. The first step to achieve this dream takes place during the Pacific Games, which sees the men's football competition doubling up as the Olympic qualifier. Hendra Singh has more. In the six-yard box, and it is Nangaletha, it's a goal! Four years ago, it was New Zealand which ended the dreams of an Olympics debut for the Under-23 side. However, this time around, the Fijians want nothing less than a sport for Brazil. We, we know what we've done in the last Olympic qualification in New Zealand. Uh, we lost one nil for, to go to London, so we know we can repeat something similar. We hope and repeat it. We have a good squad. Buzetti has already started his plans and preparations for the playoffs with a camp to be called in a fortnight. And on the 3rd, 4th and 5th of March will be the first camp here. Only two and a half days, but it's enough not to disturb the districts for the weekend games, uh, but enough for us to have um, all the finalize all the documentation. There is one piece of good news for the Fijians as two of the nations taking part in the Pacific Games are not eligible for the Olympics, making the road slightly easy. So um, we try to do the best. Um, New Caledonia and Tahiti, they will participate, but they will not be able to qualify because under the French uh, rules they are not no able to participate in, in the Olympic uh, games, so that is a plus because you had two teams that will be able to qualify. So they open a little bit more the doors, and uh, but nothing will be easy. It will be a very very difficult tournament. The national under 20 side created history last year, and riding on the back of that, the Olympians can follow suit. However, the struggle will be real, and no quarters given by any of the teams taking part. Interesting, FBC Sports. New Zealand are two from two with the Cricket World Cup after beating Scotland by three wickets at University Oval today. The win and from 10 tonight you can catch the highlights of the great match played yesterday between West Indies and Ireland which will also be replayed at 9am and 2pm tomorrow. That is your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business.
South Pacific Stock Exchange has lifted a temporary trading halt on Future Forest Fiji Limited shares following a company market announcement today. The company specializes the teak plantation and is currently facing cash flow challenges. This was reported to its shareholders at the annual general meeting in November last year. As a plantation company whose main asset is trees, which may not mature for another 16 to 20 years, the company is planned for lean periods. In a market announcement made through the stock exchange, the directors say immediate steps are being taken to allow the company to trade until new sources of revenue are identified, including nursery operations and small-scale sawmilling. The directors are confident that opportunities are available to stabilize the company and are working with their advisors on a number of related matters. They hope to make an announcement in the next 8 to 10 weeks. The stock exchange placed a temporary halt on the trading of future forest shares and convertible notes yesterday while awaiting the company's market announcement. Warm, humid weather with occasional scattered light showers prevailed over most parts of the country today. Maximum temperatures were in the 30s again. Sa- Savo Savo and Lautoka hit 32. Lambasa by 90 recorded 33, while Suva topped with 34, which with the humidity fell like 40 as the current hot spell continues. Much the same for tomorrow with the possibility of brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, it should be fine apart from the chance of afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms. Some of those thunderstorms could bring heavy rainfall. Looking ahead to Thursday, expect more of the same. And recapping our main stories, European Union identifies sugar industry weaknesses, FPSA challenges legality of FTUC elections, and Ministry of Health reviews nursing structure to retain skilled workers. To our poll segment for this week, we're asking, are there enough public conveniences? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from FBC News for tonight. See you again tomorrow at the same time. Bye for now.